to make this thing work? Well, sure, just let the, pre let the presses roll, right? Paper and ink, let them roll. We'll just make some more. If you and I functioned like that, they'd have us locked up. Ink is cheap, paper is cheap. Costs the same amount of money to print a $100 bill as it does a one. Just different plates. I watched those things roll off the press. They were making $100 bills at one time. Flying through their big sheets. I was over at the Bureau of Engraving. Standing up there on that catwalk, they take you around there where you can watch them work. These huge presses and that money just like a blur as fast as you can see. $100 bills flying off there all day long. I don't know if they have a second and third shift. They might. Now they must. Although a lot of what they do is just computer impulses. You just make an entry. There it is. Another trillion. Just like that. Is it like magic? Wow. See, Obama can do that. See, he's got the magic. He's the one. He's the, they call him the one. He's the one who will speak and the oceans will recede. <laughs> right? That's what he said. He said it with his own mouth. Well, he promised you change. And that's all you're going to have left after he takes your dollars. Just the change. That's all that's going to be left. And you've got to buy into this system or you'll be fined $3,800 if you don't have insurance. And you cut your arm and you go to the emergency room and they stitch you up and find out you don't have insurance, you get fined $3,800 for not having the insurance, plus you got to pay the other. That really helps people, doesn't it? Situations are so bad right now, there are suburbs, Chicago suburbs, their houses, big houses selling for one dollar and nobody wants them. Because they don't want to pay the tax or the upkeep. They can't, they don't have the money. Everybody's broke. They say the market is up, up, up. People are still walking the streets with their heads hanging down, down, down. No work. If they can find work, it doesn't pay enough. It is really a deplorable situation. And there is a curse on this nation for all of its sodomy and for all of its baby killing and for all of these ridiculous things that are passing. In fact, when Nancy, pardon me, Nasty Pelosi was up there making that speech as the Speaker of the House Remember when they put, they installed her? She had a whip in her hand, a black bull whip. And she held it in her hand over her head and said, I am now the most powerful woman in the United States. Hey, you see a woman lift up a bull whip and say that, get out of the way. If you see a man do it, get out of the way too. But I'm just saying, it's just something really unladylike. You understand what I'm saying? Unladylike to hold a bullwhip up and say, listen to me. I, this is power. Listen to me roar. Hmm? And so while she was up there presenting this health care package and people were held off, the crowd of protesters was off in a distance. One man had the presence of mind to bring a bullhorn. And when she started to speak, he put the bullhorn up and said, Nazi Pelosi, you will burn in hell for this. And it just resonated through the whole place. Oh, we need to really pray. Turn with me while I have a few minutes left. To the book of Luke, chapter 18, just for a few verses here. Folks, we need to pray. We need to pray. Behold, he prayeth. God was speaking when he said, when that was said. It was God speaking. Behold, he prayeth. God sees your prayers. God hears your prayers. Not one is wasted. You call upon him, all heaven opens up. He's listening. Behold, he prayeth. And I love that, you know, the King James Bible is the only Bible in the English language that God uses. And I love the way it's structured because 
Well, it, it's structured by God. It doesn't say, behold, he prays. Behold, he's prayed. Behold, he prayeth. You continue on. He, he never stops. He's praying, 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 praying. He prayeth! God sees his people that prayeth. Pray without ceasing. We breathe our prayers. We fall asleep with our prayers. We wake up with them. Things could be so different if we'd pray. You know, it doesn't take much to change history, really. I think of a certain instance, I'll read this in a moment, I think of a certain instance where there was a woman who hired a young man to come and do some wallpaper and painting. And he came, he showed up at her house and started working on it and he started the wallpapering came back several days working on it and one day he came in and she would come in and say hello to him every so often. She knew him. He was somewhat of a friend of the family. But she'd come in sometimes to talk to him a little bit and one day when she was about to walk in there he had a gun with him and he took it out put it to his head. And she ran over to him and said what are you doing? He said things are not going well with me. He said, I have nothing to live for. I'm going to pull this trigger and I'm going to end it all. And she started to talk to him and try to reason with him. He said, you better leave the room because I'm going to pull the trigger. Nothing's going to change my mind. He was determined he was going to kill himself. She kept reasoning with him and, and pleading with him and talking to him as a friend and tried to counsel him and and finally, he took the gun away. And the woman took the gun from the hands of Adolf Hitler, who almost pulled the trigger. How would that have changed history? Now, I wouldn't rejoice in anybody killing themselves. I'm only saying, how would this have changed history? There are people right now that are up to no good. When Hitler came into power, after Mein Kampf, shortly after that incident, Mein Kampf came forth. Then all of the rabble rousing in the Munich beer halls, and then the brown shirt army, then the rise to power of the chancellery in Germany, then he became Der Führer. And it wasn't long until millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of people were dying. Who knows what they're up to right now in Washington? We need to pray. It doesn't take much to change things. God knows how to do it. Because if something doesn't happen soon, it's over. Now whatever God's will is, is fine. But no matter what, it's right to pray. I remember when Newt Gingrich was the Speaker of the House and Shirley and I were in Washington DC standing over there near, actually near the Senate chamber and far over on one end of the building, the Capitol building, and out walked Newt Gingrich and, and his entourage, all these other people with him. And I looked at him and he stopped, broke his stride and stopped and stared right into my eyes. And it was like looking into the Grand Canyon. There was just nothing there. Deep, empty. And the expression on his face I will never forget. And he locked eyes with me and something troubled him. Something shook him up. And he quickly snapped and turned around and walked away with his little group. I don't know what he was doing near the Senate because he was the Speaker of the House. He must have had some business. But that door just whipped open and all these people came out. And he stopped. He was in a hurry, but he stopped to look at me. And Shirley was facing away from him. She didn't have the pleasure of looking at him. 